When comparing two phones, usually the reason for doing so is very simple. These two phones cost the same amount of money, so which should you buy? But with the Nothing Phone one, there's the added spice of Carl Pei, the founder who helped found OnePlus. So when choosing a phone to compare with it, the answer was obvious. The OnePlus Nord 2T. Both phones are a similar price, both have high points and low points, so which should you buy? Carl Pei's current phone company's phone, or his previous company's phone? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocket Lint, and in this video I'll hopefully help you to decide. If you do like this video and find it useful, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Now if there's one area these two are drastically different, it's in the design. But then again, there's not much out there on the market quite like the Nothing Phone 1. At least not when it comes to the transparent elements of the phone's rear. In order to make that happen, Nothing had to consider how it designed all the internals, so that they'd look good from the outside, and then decorated it with LED lights called glyphs. These can be programmed to flash in patterns that match a ringtone or used as fill lights for photography and video. But that purposeful and very deliberate approach to design is seen in the individually ringed cameras and the display on the front with its completely uniform bezel all the way around it. And it stands in stark contrast to the OnePlus which has a bafflingly large camera unit and a bezel around the display which isn't even on all sides at all. The chin for instance is much chunkier than the other three sides. What's more with its aluminium straight edged frame the Nothing Phone has a more sturdy feel to it than the OnePlus as well because that has a plastic frame sandwiched between glass on the front and the back. Even the buttons are nicer to click on the Nothing Phone. It's also IP53 rated against water and dust where OnePlus isn't, although it should still survive minor spray. If there's any downside to the Nothing approach is that being completely flat means it's not as comfy to hold as the OnePlus phone, which has curved glass on the back. OnePlus is narrower too, which again makes it a little easier to hold one-handed. Now moving on to displays, and what's interesting here is that the calibration differences between these two phones also seem to carry over to the cameras, which we'll get to a bit later. That's to say that even with both set to their natural or standard modes, the Nothing Phone has a much nicer, more natural and warmer approach to it. And when we say warm, we mean the white light has that golden, real look to it. OnePlus, by comparison, seems to make this cooler and oversaturates colours too, making reds and oranges seem too red and overblown. That means for live action movies and TV shows and for photos, the Nothing Phone is the much nicer panel to our eyes. Now there is some calibration you can tweak on both, they both give you more vivid or saturated options, and a slider to adjust the warmth and the coolness. Now the other benefit of the Nothing display is that it is bigger, so it definitely gives you more of an expansive feel to your content. It's also got faster refresh rates and seems slightly brighter and supports HDR10+. So it is the more dynamic of the two displays as well. Now before we go on to performance and battery, just a quick note on the software differences. Because actually this is a key differentiator in the experience between these two phones as well. If only to say that nothing software is much closer to the software you'll find on the Pixel. And there aren't really any additional apps or doubles or redundancies. It does have this dot matrix themed text everywhere and connectivity quick access toggles designed to be a little more useful. Oxygen OS on OnePlus is in essence the same as Oppo's Color OS and has an interface very much like older versions of Android. Some people might like that, some people might prefer the Nothing Phone. But it does mean you get more in the quick settings shade, and OnePlus gives easy access to personalization, allowing you to change a lot of the interface and the icons more easily. So on to performance. And which suits you here best likely depends on what you're planning to do with it. If you're likely to be spending your game with graphically intense games, the more powerful cores on the MediaTek 1300 powered OnePlus should mean you get more performance than you will from the Snapdragon 778 powered Nothing Phone. It seems more capable of sustaining higher frame rates during gaming. So if you benchmark using a 3D Mark benchmark, the OnePlus will outperform the Nothing Phone, but in Geekbench they're remarkably similar. But here's the thing though, in everyday usage when you're just loading up apps, you're not really going to notice much difference at all. Loading apps side by side, they seem to load things with virtually identical speed. So if your phone is there primarily for social media, web browsing, video watching and the odd spot of casual gaming, there's really nothing in this. For the casual user then, you'll do no worse with one or the other, in terms of speed and fluidity. Of course, the Nothing Phone's 120Hz display can reach higher refresh rates, so that can help everything feel super smooth in the interface, but the 90Hz on the OnePlus is still very good and with the naked eye I struggle to see much difference. 
you're more likely to see significant differences when it comes to battery, or more technically accurate, the charging speeds. Both phones have the same 4,500 mAh capacity battery, and for the most part, we didn't experience much difference in how long they would last. Both will comfortably last a full day with two or three hours of casual use. I'd find most days I'd finish somewhere between 35 and 45% battery depending on what I was doing that day. However, in a pinch, if you need to refill quickly, it's the OnePlus Nord that's going to do that for you. With its 80 watt fast charger, which comes in the box, it can completely refill in under half an hour. It takes over an hour to refill the Nothing phone at its maximum 33 watt speeds. And that's if you have a charger that goes to those speeds, because the Nothing phone doesn't actually ship with one. However, if there's one added convenience of the Nothing phone one is that it has wireless charging. OnePlus doesn't. It's nowhere near as fast as wired charging, but it is handy if you're a nighttime charger and you just want to put it down on a mat or a stand when you go to bed. So here's an interesting thing about these cameras. Both of them use the same sensor in the primary camera. It's the Sony IMX766 50 megapixel sensor. They also both have a secondary ultra wide. Nothing has a 50 megapixel, OnePlus has eight. But if you thought that having the same sensor in the main camera would mean the same results, that's understandable, but the reality isn't that, not all the time. You may often see the two cameras will produce photos that are remarkably close to each other in terms of color, at least but we'd often see a difference in the contrast. OnePlus phone seems to crank it up higher, so the end result is that nothing has images that look a little more like the real object that you see when you're looking at it, and the Nord 2T makes the darker elements darker, not lifting the shadows as much. That does tend to give the Nord photos a look of artificial sharpness, which you might like, but the nothing's more natural approach is the one that I personally prefer, even if the end image looks a little softer and maybe not quite as exciting. As for ultrawides, there's not much competition here. It may not be perfect, but the Nothing's ultrawide delivers much better images than the OnePlus's. The Nord ultrawide seems to struggle with highlights and shadows a lot more, and the end results just aren't as crisp and sharp. It's just not a very good ultrawide camera at all. Neither is particularly good in low light. When shooting indoors away from bright sources of light, you'll see noise creeping into the shadows on both phones. However, in the dedicated night mode, the OnePlus does do a better job of bringing in more light. In the really low light scenes, that's very noticeable in night mode. There's an argument that the bright areas here are overexposed, but then OnePlus does lift more light out of the shadows too, so you can actually see stuff. So in the end, if you were to ask me which of these two phones I would spend my own money on, the answer would be the Nothing Phone 1. A big part of that is obviously down to the novelty and the approach to design, it's just a bit more exciting and different. But it's also got the better camera, and the lighter approach to software which is a big part of the experience. And to me it also has the better display. Nord 2T does have faster charging and the more powerful processor technically, and it also comes from an older brand with a bit more historical reputation, so that might be something to consider as well, because we're yet to see how well and how timely software updates appear on the Nothing phone regardless of what they say. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments section down below. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.